Hi, today in Vox Prinda, Nirmal Expressions of Nirmala Sitaraman. I wanted to do this show about five days ago, but I guess I went into some kind of shock and just couldn't get myself to thinking this through. But now, Sadma hi lag gaya. With Mantri ke paas chunav lerne ke paise nahi hai. How out of funds is the finance minister that she has had to publicly acknowledge that she does not have that kind of money to contest the election? This is what she has said in a recent media interaction when asked about her plans to contest the Lok Sabha elections. She is the finance minister of India's richest political party, a party that by its own disclosures has a fund pool of nearly 13,000 crores. She comes from a party that has built hundreds of offices in the last decade, yet she has no money, she, by her own admission, she has no money to fight the Lok Sabha election. Kuch bhi chal rahe desh mein. She says she went and informed the party high command and they accepted her decision to decline the ticket. Did the high command just accept this reasoning of hers at face value? Didn't Nadda ji and Modi ji tell her that the party will fund her campaign, a party worth more than 13,000 crores and can't fund its own candidate? By the Election Commission's own guidelines, no Lok Sabha candidate is allowed to spend more than 95 lakhs on the election, or on the Lok Sabha election. So can the BJP not spare such a small amount out of its huge corpus? How could the party accept this from an electoral candidate? And how is it that the anchor sitting across the finance minister not probe her further on this? Given the dire situation, I think there are 81 plus 1 poor in the country. 81 being the 81 crore people who get free rations from the finance minister's government and then the one being the finance minister herself whose party doesn't seem to have the money to fund an election campaign while being part of the world's largest political party. Note here that I'm not talking about the finance minister in her personal capacity but in her position as a very senior member of the BJP. The BJP claimed in 2019 that it has a membership of 18 crore people. Couldn't they have crowdfunded Sita Raman's campaign? Surely her successful tenor as, as, as finance minister counts for something. Or maybe some action by the ED could have helped arrange for some more funds. There are people who are willing to pay double the price for patrol in support of the Modi government. I mean, if someone from the Congress said that they can't fund their election, I would still find that plausible. For a party that has had all its funds frozen, that reasoning holds fairly well. They cannot fight an election in any fair manner and that is precisely the reason why the accounts have been frozen in the first place. A party that can't buy a plane ticket can certainly not spend 95 lakhs per candidate in the election. A party whose leaders are appealing to the media to publish their ads with the promise of paying them back later can't be expected to fund its candidates. But the BJP, with all its money, can't fund its finance minister? This is a preposterous claim. And by the way, it would be good to remember that the orders to freeze the Congress accounts and the penalty orders by the income tax have been issued from within the finance ministry itself because the income tax department falls under it. It's one thing that the finance minister in her personal capacity doesn't have the funds to fight the election. That is okay. But it isn't true that the BJP doesn't have the funds to do so. Are the party and the finance minister taking a leaf out of the SBI's book? The bank comes under the finance ministry, making Nirmala Sitaraman the bank's chairman's superior. Dinesh Kumar Khara reports to her. Just a few weeks ago, the same SBI had told the Supreme Court that it needed 136 days to compile the details of the electoral bonds that had been sold and redeemed. When the Supreme Court came down on the bank, all the details were furnished within a few days. Similarly, if Modi ji says so, wouldn't the party arrange funds for Nirmala ji's election overnight? She has been the BJP's finance minister during the time when the party has received unearthly amounts of donations and built countless offices, organized thousands of rallies. She was the finance minister when the SBI was found to be lying to the court. She was the minister in power when government lawyers repeatedly defended an unconstitutional scheme in front of the court. She is the SBI's boss, so to speak. So how is it fair that the director of the SBI, Mr. Khara, can get an extension but Nirmala ji's election cannot be funded? This scheme was over, the, the, the electoral bond scheme was overseen by a finance minister, the late Arun Jaitley, and the finance ministry was the top executioner in all matters related to the bonds. And this is what the finance minister gets in return. 
निर्मला सीतारमन अमित शाह और एनी बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन कैन नॉट गेट अवे बाई सेंग दैट अदर पोलिटिकल पार्टीज हैव रिसीव द बॉन्द इज वेल an unconstitutional scheme was designed and executed in such a way that it intentionally benefited the ruling dispensation it was defended repeatedly in the court by the lawyers of the government who said that citizens don't have the right to know everything the opposition parties neither have the control over investigative agencies nor do they have the power to hand out contracts both the ed and the income tax department report to the finance minister The finance minister said at another media conclave that it's possible we raided someone after getting donations from them. Firstly, all news from the time when the raids were happening, it doesn't really seem to suggest that. A lot many donations happened post raids or around favorable decisions of the government. And secondly, can a raid not pressurize someone to make a donation again? point is that it's a little too hard to believe that a minister who managed to execute the scheme to perfection should have to basically say that she is not being funded by the party and when she says this when she makes this claim that she doesn't have that kind of money is she also not casting a question on her peers by saying so are they winning the elections based on their money power are they getting more than 95 lakh rupees for the election this is a very serious claim by any measure It's confounding that the finance minister should have to say this. She is a minister who has survived one of the country's worst employment crisis. She has sailed through horrible spikes uh, of inflation. She has made ridiculous statements like Uber and Ola are the cause for uh, the decline in demand of cars, and that she wouldn't know uh, about onion inflation because she doesn't eat onions. She has made these statements, and she has always gotten away with it. the party has stood by her no matter the poor performance of her department she survived multiple cabinet shufflings so it mocks common sense when a statement like this is made and it's strange that the media is not following up on this claim is it because asking this question will inevitably lead to the uncomfortable question of asking about the electoral bonds and the unfair advantage that the bjp has over other parties in terms of sheer money power She has been in the news for using the bahi khata and then the tablet for reading a budget speech. Every budget her sari is discussed and she is presented like goddess Lakshmi on news channels. And then suddenly all the Lakshmi has disappeared when it's come to her own election and nobody is asking a question. But what to expect from a media which cannot and will not ask the leaders of the BJP as to how their party and they themselves were defending and standing by an unconstitutional law which was brought by them. Again this is the same media which hardly showed anything meaningful regarding the electoral bond coverage so how can one suddenly expect it to begin to perform its duties of being a watchdog lab dog godi media is what it is till next time this is vox vrinda